servants we are all welcome to this service don't sit on the dog service you know it's uh, the financial abundance service the service ya chuma chochuluka financial abundance service service ya chuma chochuluka i'm speaking on the subject financial abundance Abundance means exceedingly plentiful. Overflowing fullness. Abundance will also mean affluence and worth. When you say that someone is living in abundance, it means that the person is living in a state of no lack. And we see scripturally that abundance is God's will for us. Second Corinthians chapter 9 and verse number 8. Two are Corinthians 9 verse 8. And God is able to make all grace abound toward you. That you always having all sufficiency and all things may have an abundance for every good work. So we see from this passage of scripture that there is grace for abundance. God makes available a dimension of grace that makes abundance a possibility. It says that when this grace begins to abound, men begin to enjoy abundance. Somebody shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. I said somebody shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. So I want us to know that God wants us to enjoy plenteousness. And we have evidence of this in the word of God. Number one, when God made male and female, he commanded them to be fruitful and to multiply which signifies abundance. In Genesis chapter 1 and verse number 28, Genesis 1 verse 28, he blessed them and said, be fruitful and multiply. So the moment you talk about fruitfulness and multiplication, you are talking about plenteousness. You are talking about abundance. So right from the onset, when God came up with the idea of making male and female, he had abundance in mind for them. Number two evidence of the fact that God wants us to enjoy abundance is that our covenant fathers worked in abundance. Our covenant fathers worked in abundance. I'm showing you reasons why we should believe that abundance is the will of God for us. Number one, I am saying that when God made them male and female, 
He commanded them to be fruitful and multiply, which is a picture of abundance. And I have just given you Genesis 1 and verse 28. And the second reason is that our covenant fathers worked in abundance. The Bible has written about them. To act as examples or call them patterns of what we can also expect as we walk with God like they did. The Bible says in Romans 15 and verse number 4 that the things that were written in the past were written for our learning. Yes, so that we through the patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. And so we see scripturally that our father in the faith I'm talking about Abraham Abraham Worked in abundance. He worked in abundance. You must understand as a believer that you are the seed or a descendant of Abraham. You are a descendant of Abraham. Somebody shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. You are the seed of Abraham. You came from Abraham. The Bible says in Galatians chapter 3. Bible And verse 29. Verse 29. That if you are Christ. Then you are Abraham. Abraham's seed. So the genes in you are the genes of Father Abraham. And all the offshoots of Abraham were giants in the scriptures. There were giants. There were giants. Because he himself was a giant in the realm of abundance. Genesis chapter 13 and verse number 2, he was very rich. Genesis 13 verse 2, he was very rich. Rich in livestock, rich in silver. Rich in gold. Mm. In Genesis 24, verse number one. Genesis 24, verse one. The man was blessed in all things. That is abundance. Verse number 35, Genesis 24. Genesis 24, verse 35. Verse number 35, the Bible says, God has blessed my master greatly. And he has become great. And he has given him flocks and herds and silver and gold and male and female servants and camels and donkeys. The man Abraham enjoyed abundance. Like begets like. We are the seed of Abraham. Abraham. Poverty and lack must have no siege on us. Look at the seed of Abraham by the name Isaac. In Genesis 26. Genesis 26. My God. And verse number 13. Verse number 13. The Bible says the man began to prosper and continued prospering until he became very prosperous. What did he have? Let's go to verse number 14. The Bible says that he had possessions of flocks and possessions of herds and a great number 
of servants. A great number of servants. He had a great number of servants. In your life, you shall have a great number of employees. In the name of Jesus. Look at Jacob, it was the same story. So every descendant of Abraham must have the same testimony of abundance. The same testimony of abundance. Genesis 30 verse 43, the man Jacob was exceedingly prosperous. Genesis 30 verse 43, Yakobo exceedingly prosperous. How about Hezekiah? Second Chronicles 32. 2 32. Verses 27 to 29. Verse 27 29. The Bible says that the man had very great riches. He had very great riches. He had very great riches. That's true. That is what that passage is telling us. Somebody shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Number three reason why we must believe that God's will for us is abundance. Is that when God delivered the children of Israel from the Egyptian captivity, He gave them abundant health and worth. When God delivered the children of Israel from the Egyptian captivity. He gave them abundant health and worth. The Bible speaking in Psalm 105 and verse number 37. Verse 37. It says that he brought them out with silver and gold. And there was none feeble among his tribes. That is what we are saying. That they did not come out of that captivity empty handed. They had abundance of silver and go on. At the same time, they had an abundance of health. Now, we are also told that in the wilderness, they lacked nothing. Did you know that the children of Israel did not lack anything in the wilderness? The Bible says so. Bible Let God be true and every man a liar. Deuteronomy chapter 2 and verse number 7, for example. Deuteronomy 2, verse 7. What is sense? Deuteronomy chapter 2 and verse number 7. Deuteronomy 2, verse 7. The last part of that verse. These 40 years. Zaka 40 minutes. The Lord your God has been with you. You have lacked nothing. And God never said to Moses, Moses, why are you lying to the people? And the people themselves never said, Moses, you are lying to us. You remember this day we lacked this, we lacked that. They never said anything like that, sir. In the wilderness, they lacked nothing. In Deuteronomy chapter 8 and verse number 4. Deuteronomy 8 verse 4. Deuteronomy chapter 8 and verse number 4. Deuteronomy 8 verse 4. The Bible says that in the wilderness, your garments did not wear out on you. 
Nor did your foot swell these 40 years. These kinds of testimonies shall be your portion in your life's journey. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Somebody is listening to me, please. Can I hear a louder shout of amen? Amen. Deuteronomy 29 and verse number 5. Deuteronomy 29, verse 5. The Bible says, Bible now, Kuti. Moses talking to the people. Moses, he says, I have led you 40 years in the wilderness. Your clothes have not worn out on you. And your sandals have not worn out on your feet. I decree this hour that the Lord God of heaven shall sustain you. I said he shall sustain you. I said he shall sustain somebody listening to me. In the mighty name of Jesus. You may be seated, hear me. Why should we believe that God's will for us is abundance. Reason number four. Our Lord Jesus Christ came so that we should have life in abundance. Our Lord Jesus Christ came that we should have life in abundance. John chapter 10 and verse number 10. Johanne 10 verse 10. Very clear, very clear. Yes, the verse is very clear. Jesus said, Yes, or that? I have come that they may have life and that they may have it in abundance. He came that we should have life in abundance. Life in abundance. That is how we know that God's will for us is abundance. Abundance of all things. And we are specifically looking at financial Abundance. Financial abundance is the will of God for the believer. I have said severally during this season why a believer must have money and more money. I don't have time to go back to those teachings. But I believe everybody agrees that it is better to have money than not to have it. And no one should say that money is not important. Because to say so is to be unscriptural. The Bible shows us that money is important. And Jesus considered money to be very important in his earthly ministry. He even appointed an accountant for the ministry. And don't think the administrator did not have enough money. Because Judas Iscariot, the accountant, the treasurer, was stealing from the treasury all the time and the ministry did not collapse. That means there was a lot of money there, sir. Jesus could ride in boats. Yes, in those boat. days, riding in a boat over the sea. Hmm? 
Not just boats, ships. Sitima. Ma, si, ma sitima. Yes. Ships. Mm. Jesus rode in ships. Yes, I'm aware of Masitima Abanyanja. Don't think those rides were free. Musa Kanizi would have a Masitima Kumene Kamakura Ure. As a matter of fact, when you read your Bible in Mark chapter 4, Muka Wenga Bible Lanu, Mariko Mutufor. Verses 35 to 36. Verse 35 in Bakana 36. When he told them, let us cross over to the other side. Verse 36, quickly please. 36. The Bible says, Bible Now when they had left the multitude, they took him along in the boat as he was. Now hear me. Listen, Akuti. and other little boats were also with him. Other little boats. He did not ride in little boats. Yes, sir. He had his own hired boat. That means others entered other little boats. Him and his disciples, they chartered their own. So in our day, Jesus would have been chartering planes mm. and then owning them. Mm. Is it making sense here? Hallelujah. Mm. In Luke chapter 8, Luke 8, verse number 3, verse 3, New Living Translation. The Bible talks about many who were contributing their own resources to support Jesus and his disciples. And he did not say, please go away with your resources. I don't need them. No. That means money is important to Jesus and his ministry. Is it making sense? You may be holy. But if you don't have money, sir, even your holiness will be challenged. You will be forced to lie. Is it, let's be honest. It's better to have money. And if you don't know what to do with it, you keep it in the account. If you don't know what to do with your money, it is a good problem. That, sir, to have no money and to be cracking your head. To say, how do I get it? That's why at the age of 21, people are already suffering high blood pressure, sir. Where is the problem coming from? You are too young to be having high blood pressure. Oh, migraine, migraine, migraine. You are thinking too much. Migraine, migraine. migraine. Hmm? When you have money, you contribute towards the advancement of the work of God Uma in beneka. practical terms. Uma tandiza, mwe, zenu, it's not just about, no, pastor, we are praying for you. No, 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 apart from praying for me, give to the work that I am doing. Is it making sense here? Yes, yes now. Abusa terina not good. Good. You know, Malawians, they, that, that is what they say. A Malawi, a no, we are with you, sir. We are very much on the same page. <laughs> so now, show it in practical terms. Sir, I'm building here. Now, to show that we are on the same page, bring cement here. Bring it. Is it is, that's how to show that we are together now. 
Somebody shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, so Panu, let me show you what I'm calling characteristics of supernatural abundance. Number one. It is sorrow free. Zima kala zopanda chisoni. It is sorrow free. Zima kala zopanda chisoni. If riches and worth comes from God, it is free of sorrow. Ngati ndalama ndi chuma za chokela kwa mulungu zima bwela upanda chisoni. Is it making sense here? That which is the blessing of God is sorrow free. Any abundance that torments you may not be from God. Proverbs chapter 10 verse 22. The Bible says the blessing of the Lord makes one rich and adds no sorrow with it. The blessing, the abundance that comes from God is sorrow free. That is the kind that Abraham had. That is the kind that Isaac had. That is the kind that Jacob had. That is the kind that Job had. Sorrow free. Sorrow free. If you are cutting corners in the name of getting money, you are mistaken. If you are sinning against God, in the name of attaining financial abundance, you are a liar. Because the rich young ruler said to Jesus, Since I have been young, I have obeyed the Ten Commandments. And one of them was, thou shalt not steal. And he said, I have observed all. Including not stealing from anybody. And yet he was rich. It means you don't have to steal to be rich. Please, Malawians. You don't have to steal to be rich. Job was the greatest of the people of the East, isn't it? Job 1 and verse number 3. We are running quickly. Job 1 verse 3. Yes. He was the greatest of all the people of the East. That is, he was the richest of their time. And yet the Bible vouches for him for being a righteous man. Job 1 and verse number 1. Job 1 verse 1. That man was blameless and upright. He feared God and shunned evil. That means he did not become rich by stealing and sinning. My friend, if you're hunting for all the women in the world to have sex with in the name of I have money, you are just being stupid. You're just being stupid and foolish. Because real men that had real worth are reported to have been blameless and upright. They God and shunned evil. Somebody shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Number two. 
characteristics of supernatural abundance. Number one, it is sorrow free. Number two, it always exceeds what is needed per time. Supernatural abundance. So always exceeds what is needed per time. Ephesians 3 and verse number 20. God does exceedingly abundantly above. So it comes in surplus dimensions. It always exceeds expectation. It comes in more than enough dimensions. You remember Malachi chapter 3 and verse number 10. The Bible talks about what will happen when God opens the heavens. It says that he shall release a blessing. So much of it that there will not be room enough to receive it. That is, it is going to be overflowing. May you receive that kind of abundance. I'm talking to you, I said, may you receive that kind of abundance. Number three, characteristics of supernatural abundance. It can come from any channel. This kind of abundance can come from any channel. Any channel. Any channel. It can come by labor. But that will not be the only channel this kind of abundance may come. Somebody shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. I mean, there's no denying that the patriarchs were hard workers. I mean, I'm talking about Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. These were hard workers. But how do you explain the abundance of men like Isaac and Jacob? Amazing, because uh, this man Isaac came on stage to really do something big in the season of famine. Genesis 26 and verse number 1. Genesis 26 verse 1. The Bible says, and there was a famine in the land. Besides the first famine that was in the days of Abraham. And naturally, uh, the man Isaac, had wanted to go to where there was food supplies, and that was Egypt. But look at verse 2. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. The Bible says that God appeared to him and said, Boy, do not go down to Egypt. That is what we do, isn't it? When we think Malawi is rough and tough, we want to migrate to Zambia, Tanzania, and South Africa. But there are times when God will be telling you, Do not go down there. Live in the land of which I shall tell you. The best place to live is where God is telling you to live. Somebody shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because I'm sure you know that a goat in Lilongwe will still be a goat in London. You may change locations, it doesn't change your identity. So the best place to live is where God is showing you to live. So you can see that in the life of Isaac, it was not just that he was a hard-working person. 
there was a supernatural power that guided his steps. This power shall guide your steps all the days of your life. In the mighty name of Jesus. I said in the name of Jesus. So the Bible says in that verse number 6, let's see. Yeah. So the man Isaac dwelt in Gerar. That is a place that God had wanted him to stay. Despite that there was famine in the land. So look at verse number 12. What happened when Isaac dwelt in the land that God had showed him? Isaac sowed in that land. And he reaped in the same year a hundred four. And that blessing alone changed Isaac's identity. Because in verse number 12, he is called Isaac. Before verse 12, I Isaac. In verse number 13, he is called the man. Verse 13, Change of level. This year, I see God changing your status. I see God changing your level. I said, I see God changing your level. In the mighty name of Jesus. I'm talking to you. Can I hear loud a shout of amen? Amen. You may be seated. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. I said glory be to God. Hallelujah. This kind of abundance can come from any channel. Elijah was fed by the ravens. 1 Kings chapter 17 verses 1 to 6. 1 Kings 17 verse 1 and 6. Jesus taught Peter to get money from the mouth of a fish. Matthew 17 and verse 27. Matthew 17 verse 27. God caused a wind from his presence to blow quails in the direction of the children of Israel. Numbers chapter 11 and verse number 31. We see God splitting a rock for the gushing out of the waters that the children of Israel needed. Isaiah 48, verse 21. Isaiah 48, He split the rock and the waters gushed out. Listen to me. God can split anywhere to give you what you are looking for. And tonight, may you leave this service with a testimony. In the name of Jesus. I said in the name of Jesus. I said in the name of Jesus. Please sit down. One day, when I obeyed God, to give him the first fruit offering. My first salary of the year. Which I don't eat. Every year. I give it to Jesus. When I did it that particular time. I was just hoping. That God. Was going to honor his word. And one day, Tsukurina, after service, service at, I entered my office. Dalu, um, office mwanga. Somebody came. We knock at the and said, Pastor, Nani I was listening to you by radio. And then she explained what I talked about, which was a lesson to her. And so she said, Daddy, I stay in Blantyre, but I came specifically to honor you. I have brought this. 
And it was one big envelope. Inali envelope ya ikuru of money. Ya ndalama. Yes. Before I received it, this I asked this lady. Dinamfu sanzima ya mene. I said, "How old are you?" Because she looked a teenager to me. So I said, where, where has this girl gotten this money from? You may have taken maybe your parents' money and you want to bring it to me. She smiled and she said, Pastor, I'm 26. I, although I look 16, but I'm 26. Did I work for that money, sir? No, it's a supernatural supply. It's a supernatural what? Yes, it's a supernatural supply. Supernatural supply. I can't share some testimonies because some of you, when I look at your faces, you are full of jealousy. So I will not share. <laughs> Somebody shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Supernatural what, sir? Surprise. God can split anywhere. If he can split the rock, then he can split anywhere to provide for his children. This year, may you receive supernatural abundance. I said supernatural abundance. I said supernatural abundance. I said supernatural abundance. I said in the mighty name of Jesus. I said in the mighty name of Jesus. God, you see, when God wants to provide for you, He can command anything to feed you. Did you know that? He can command birds to feed you. That is what He did with His servant Elijah. God can do anything and can use anything to provide for his servants. And servants there means someone who serves God in practical ways in the church. And just coming to church like you have done to sit there is not serving God. This is not the same as serving God. But if you are an usher in the church, you are serving God. If you are an interpreter in the church, like my brother here, you are serving God. If you are in the choir, you are serving God. Yes. If you are a sanctuary keeper, you are serving God. If you are a traffic officer outside there, you know, directing cars where to park, you are serving God. If you are winning souls to Christ, you are serving God. If you are in protocol, protocol, you are serving God. Somebody shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you are in the hospitality department, you are serving God. If you are in the sanitation department, you are serving God. But before you come, if all you do is to come and sit, and say amen and stand up as the pastor is preaching you are not serving God so I'm saying that God can do anything to provide for those who serve him it's true you see when Saul began to persecute the church servants of God he began to persecute children of God you know, Jesus appeared to him in a bright light that shone around Saul and his men and they all fell down I said they all fell down 
But Paul said, who are you, O Lord? Listen. Jesus said, yes, or that. I am Jesus whom you are persecuting. Acts 9, 5. I am Jesus whom you are persecuting. And then when they were stoning Stephen, Yes, in Acts chapter 7. Much to the seven. Stephen saw Jesus. Stephen, I know when I yes standing. At a immediate. We know that his usual usual position is that he is seated at the right hand of the Father. Tima zogu di mena makalida yes so amakala. But Stephen saw Jesus standing. Koma Stephen, I know when I yes at a immediate. Is it making sense here? Sikumveka koda. Yeah, yeah. Because he is there to stand up for those who serve him. So I can tell you, even ahead of myself, that one of the cheapest means of securing and attaining abundance in Christ is serving him. Service, service, service. Service. It's not hard work alone. It's not hard work alone. How many hard working Malawians do we have? And how many of them are still suffering hard life? Check your Bible. It is not the sweating of a man that makes him rich, but the blessing of God. Somebody shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. He split the rock for them. And the waters gushed out. Characteristics of supernatural abundance. Number four. It is durable. Yes, it is durable. God's blessings last beyond a generation. It outlives you. It outlasts you. That is why the Bible will tell you that the worth of Abraham was transferred to Isaac. And then he built on it to become very rich. Is it making sense? Now, let's look at keys for living in abundance. Keys for living in abundance. Number one, know and believe that it is possible for you to live in abundance. Know and believe. Have knowledge. That is, let it be revealed to you. It must dawn on your spirit. That living in abundance is, is, is a possibility. People lack in life and to Moyo because they lack knowledge. Hosea 4:6. Hosea 4, verse 6. People lack in life. And to Moyo because they lack knowledge. Nothing transforms like information. Jesus said, Yes, for that. You shall know the truth. And the truth shall make you free. John 8 and 32. Johanna 8, verse 32. Hallelujah. Amen. So you can't enjoy what you do not know. 
I said you can't enjoy what you don't know. So most of us, what we need is illumination, call it revelation, enlightenment. And you see, there is no illumination. Understanding. Revelation. Without exposing yourself to relevant knowledge. Most of us need to expose ourselves to books. Messages, sermons, teachings on worth, prosperity, and abundance. Because unless you know, you can never grow. Unless you know, you can never go far. And one of the things to know is that it doesn't matter your current situation. It is possible for you to live in financial abundance, material abundance, or any kind of abundance that you are looking at. You don't have to change your citizenship to live in abundance. Is it making sense here? Yeah. You must know that it is possible. You must believe that it is possible because what you believe is what you become you see if you don't believe it you cannot become it Jesus said so John 1 12 those who became children of God were those who believed if you don't believe, you don't become. If you want to become it, begin to believe it. Begin to believe it. Begin to believe it. <laughs> Somebody shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Number two. Touch weed. Think abundance. Think abundance. So I'm dealing with your mindset. Because what you are not in the inside, you cannot be on the outside. So you need to embrace an abundance mindset. And get rid of a poverty mindset, a lack mindset. A mindset that says, I do not have, we cannot have, what can we do? Most Malawians, believe that they cannot survive without a well-wisher. That is true. So when you are an MP, a member of parliament, you are in trouble. Actually, to want to be a member of parliament is to register for problems. Because you become people's father, mother, uncle, niece, brother, sister. 
tate, mayi, amalume, wanto wose. People will be bearing children on you. And to come back and say, "I do some money they I'm just stating facts the way they are. To come back and say, "Zintu menezidi." We are living in communities where, on average, in most homes, there is only one well-to-do person. One. To call a mother, a man, a kuri mo netsetse. In a clan, in a clan. Pantundu. Yes, you find that there is one, one big uncle. And he likes it even when they call him uncle. uncle. Big Joe, big Joe, a big A big Yes, a big You know, let me tell you a story. Um, a house worker of one of our friends died. One sheet or one more was in Zatu Adam Alida. Many years ago. Zaka Zambidi Zapitas. More like when we were just starting out in life. Yes. So now, uh, so we, we took the body to his home village, village for burial. When we arrived that but we arrived in the night. When we arrived. Tinafika. You know what people said in that village? And they were crying hard. I said, ah. This guy not in Zungwet. Is it making sense? Big man of our village. That's the mentality. That means everyone was looking up to this person. Everyone. And such people believe that they cannot survive without such an one. And to do, I'm a Kuruvi or this Anga Kari Baba na Mutoteroi. So I'm saying to you, then you need to quit. If you want to work in abundance of any kind, and I'm emphasizing on financial abundance. Gadi mufu na kukala muzo chulu kazando ndulu osima kama kanda lama so chuluka. Your mindset. Magani zibe anu must change your mindset your thinking because Proverbs 23 verse 7 has told us yeah as he thinks in his heart so is he as he thinks in his heart not as he receives his salary at his workplace. No, as he thinks in his heart. Before we can talk about anything practical, I'm dealing with your frame first. See, it's your frame, your frame. Yes, your form. If your frame and your form does not change, you may never venture into certain realms of abundance or exploits. You know why? A bus cannot fly like a plane. It is because its form is such that it cannot what? Fly. Right. If you see a bus flying, it is an accident. If you see a bus in the air, you need to know that it is about to crash and people are about to perish. Because its form is such that it cannot what? Fly. 
Do you know that some of you, if you don't change the way you think, no matter what God has prepared for you, it may never happen. If you want God to use you, you have to be in a certain form. The form that he wants you to be. Some of you, God cannot use you because you are too Malawian. Or you are too Tumbuka. Too, too, too yawo. Too, too so God says now this man is too yao, too tonga, too tonga, too chela. There's no way we can use him. Is it making sense here? Yeah. 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 You see, you need to adjust a lot before God can use you in a certain way. Before God can use you in a certain way. Some of you cannot be missionaries because you are too localized. You are too localized. So look, if we send this guy to Djibouti, you know Djibouti, he'll be booted out there because he is too localized. <laughs> Any little thing, I find if I'm gone, if, if I'm gone, I'm gone, I'm gone, I'm gone, Change your form. And it begins with a change of thinking. Begin to think abundance. Because what you see is what you see is. Because if you don't see it, it Now, let me show you this. In Joshua chapter 1, verse number 8, maybe that's where we're going to stop for today. I'll continue with part 2 of this. I've got a lot to share with us next week. Please listen to me. This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth. Please underline the word your mouth. 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 That your mouth. Now, he says, but you shall meditate in it. Koma ulingilile mo. Underline the word meditate. Mwiken zere pasipa mauti ulingilile mo. Because to meditate is to what? To think. So he's talking about your mental faculty, your mindset. Kulinga lila ndi kukani za ukamba maipo zama kakani zidwe kanu. That you may observe. Kuti ukutu. And align the word do. We came said it on in Pamaona with Kuchita. Mouth Kama meditate. Kuringarida do. Kuchita. God says to Joshua, Mulunga Musa Yoso, if you mind this three, Zitatu is Izu as a good Sabino, you will make your way prosperous. Uzapangi Sanjirayago Kuchita Bino. And you will have good success. Says the book of the law must be in your mouth. Must be in your thinking. And must be 
in your actions. Three things form the foundation of divine success, abundance, and prosperity. Come on. Number one, your words. Number two, your thoughts. Number three, your actions. Zochita zanu. 